Hi guys and welcome to TechTimGB. This is a series where we're going to be taking on Linux, especially Linux Mint, as I asked you guys what is the best distro for beginners, and that was one of this kind of main ones that you suggested. So when I'm using Linux Mint 18, I think 18.1 with Cinnamon, uh, and then we're going to be uh, looking at the main features. Now I've got a full list of videos, in fact I think I've got uh, 10 videos right now. I'm going to be doing three as a trial run to start with and see how you guys like them. And if you enjoy them, then do hit that like button and let me know in the comments down below. And if this is the first video that you've seen of mine feel free to subscribe and check out some of the other videos as well. Now in this video we're going to be covering how to install Linux Mint and do a few updates to the system as well. Now that's a fairly simple procedure but a lot of people don't know how to create bootable USB sticks, they might not know where to get the OS from and generally just how to set it up so we're going to walk you through that process now. Now you will need a two gigabytes or more USB stick, these are fairly common to, to come by so as long as it's empty it doesn't have any files that you don't want missing on it, that's fine. It's also not something that you have to use more than just this one installation, so if you do need to use it for other things, uh, if you just copy off the files that you have and then use it for this installation, you can then delete everything that's on it and put all your stuff back on, so that's not too much of a problem. So I recommend plugging in the USB stick into your PC, then go to the Linux Mint website, which I'll leave a link to the specific version of Linux that I'm using in the uh, description down below for you. I'll also leave a link to a tool called Rufus, that is also in the description down below and that is the tool that allows you to uh, make your USB stick a bootable device. This is a fairly simple procedure, all you have to do is download both of the, the tool and the ISO and then when you open up the uh, Rufus application which is actually a portable application so you don't actually have to install it, you just run it which is very nice. Uh, so when you do that uh, you just select the little image icon down the bottom corner select the ISO that you've just downloaded, it'll probably be in your downloads folder, uh, select OK, make sure that all of the other settings look fairly decent as you can see on the screen and then click go. It will prompt you that the drive is going to get completely wiped so make sure that you don't have anything on the drive currently and then otherwise just press OK and let it do its thing. Once Rufus has completed its work, take the USB stick from your PC and plug it into the PC that you want to install Linux on. Now, depending on which operating system you're currently running, if there's no operating system on it, then you'll need to make sure that the PC is completely off. In some cases, you can actually plug it into a working PC and then run uh, an installer application from there, and then it will restart the PC with the drive and that sort of thing. But I recommend the easiest way to do it is just to uh, turn the PC that you want to install Linux on off, uh, plug in the USB stick, Turn the PC on and make sure you press the uh, delete or F12 or F1 or F2 keys, whichever key it says to enter setup right as the screen turns on, press that and then we'll go from there. There's some motherboards have the ability to actually one time change what boot device you want to select. This is uh, especially on Gigabyte BIOSes where you press the F12 key where you're able to select just the USB stick to boot this one time and then otherwise none of the other uh, things will boot first so that is uh, a nice way to do it but if you can't do it then you can go uh, into the BIOS normally and select the boot device to be the USB stick. This will often come up as, if it's a newer motherboard, UEFI and then some name of a USB stick. Uh, so that's the one that you want to select there. Once you've selected it, it's normally the F10 key to save or whatever key it says it is to save. Uh, save out and restart and then the USB stick will become your main boot device for this time period. So the system should auto boot into the USB stick. Stick. Now it will come up with what is a fairly basic menu and you can either try the OS without installing or you can directly install it depending on which version you're doing. Now I personally recommend just uh, booting into the OS and then installing it from there. Once you double click the install Linux Mint icon in the top left hand corner, the first thing you'll need to do is pick your language. I also recommend on the next menu that you actually pick the uh, checkbox that says install third party software for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware and such, it is quite useful. Otherwise you will then need to pick how you want to install the operating system. So if you want to install it next to say a Windows installation then you pick the top one and you can use this really easy to use tool that selects how much space you want each OS to have. You can of course use the advanced tool if you want to be more specific but if you want to just completely erase the disk and install this operating system from scratch you can do as well. If you select the erase disk and install Linux Mint option you can actually encrypt the whole drive as well uh, and either way you will select which drive you want to install 
channel from and then click the install now button. After you click that there will be a few other menu screens including selecting where you are in the world for your time zone and setting up a user account which is very simple you just put in your name and then a desired password that will be asked of you quite a lot but otherwise uh, that's pretty much it. Now that the operating system is installed you can remove that USB stick and use it for whatever you want to in the future. Uh, it is important to note that uh, there may be some issues that you uh, you have to deal with. First of all uh, I had a lot of issue installing Mint with uh, in fact any Linux OS with uh, the AMD Ryzen CPUs. Uh, I believe this is probably just because they need to be slightly updated to uh, work better with them uh, but what I did was a, I switched the motherboard to an Intel motherboard so you might want to just uh, use the hard drive of the SSD that you want to install Linux onto in a different PC, install it and then bring it back. Otherwise, uh, you know, you might have some issues there. But uh, the other thing to, to mention is you might also have some issue with your wireless and LAN drivers. Now, depending on what wireless or LAN, uh, you know, connection you have on the motherboard or whatever add-in card you have, uh, you may have some issues with that. So I had an issue with the uh, Gigabyte Z270 Gaming K5 board, which has a killer E2250 NIC on it. Uh, that is a, a Qualcomm NIC, not an Intel one. And the Qualcomm NICs aren't supported in the Linux kernel by default and there is no Linux support for them at this point in time so you may have some issues with that too. The Mint has a very nice welcome screen and I recommend you click on the drivers button first and install any proprietary drivers you need especially if you're using an Nvidia graphics card and you'll likely need the AMD or Intel microcode updates uh, to make the system a little bit more stable, a little bit more functional uh, and generally just more supported. Otherwise I recommend going to the little shield in the bottom corner uh, which is the update sensor and doing all of the available updates, those are security and kernel updates and all that sort of stuff, so I do recommend using uh, that function first. Uh, go through all of the updates, not all of them will appear at the same time, so you need to do a multiple rounds of updates sometimes, but otherwise that's pretty much it. So now that you've installed your Linux distro and you've done all the updates, that's pretty much it for this video. Next Saturday, 11am GMT, a week from today when this goes up, there'll be another video on command line basics, something that if you needed this video, you will definitely need that video and will be uh, hopefully very functional, very useful and very informative. So if you want to check that out, do subscribe for more updates. And of course, if you're watching this in the future, A, feel free to let me know how the world has turned out. Probably, uh, I don't know, not great or great, who knows. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below as well as also checking that video out as it will already be available. Uh, and otherwise, I'm going to leave some other videos over here for you. This is a new series, so I want to know what you think in the comments down below. Is this the best thing you've ever seen or the worst thing that you never want to see again? Let me know in the comments down below as well. And of course, subscribe like and all that good stuff and of course share the series if you think it's uh, enjoyable and worthwhile as well so otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and we'll see you all in the next one